Hey folks, welcome back. This is Gray here, and today we're going to be looking at the DJI 2000, uh, which is a portable power station. And uh, man, they have made some upgrades. All right, folks. So Back into the power station game. I've done some power stations. I got several power stations to do over the next month or so, but today we're going to be focusing in on the DJI 2000. About a year or so ago, I did the DJI 1000. Uh, pretty impressive. I compared it to one of the EcoFlows that were out there just to kind of get a generalization of how it compares because they were kind of new in the market uh, when it comes to power stations. They have a reputable name in the drone industry and the mic industry and you know gimbals and all that stuff like that. Uh, but man, have they have made some huge upgrades on this machine. So let's kind of get into the specs. And while I'm talking to you, I will be showing you some of the things. We do a couple of different things in this video. Uh, as we're going over the specifications, I kind of show you where the button layouts are. Talk about some of the you know things that I've noticed with it. Um, and at the end of this video, uh, if you're one of those tech nerds that want to know every specific thing from the ohms to the wattage to every little specific detail... Uh, there's a gentleman that I follow on YouTube, and he does an amazing job. He has all those high-tech end gadgets to kind of make it, to show you everything. Anything you can think of, he has a gadget for it, and I'll tag that at the end of the video. And uh, also leave a link in down in the description uh, for his channel. Uh, if you want a more detailed aspect of the DJI 2000, you want the really nitty-gritty technical aspect of it. All right, so let's start off. The DJI 2000 is a 2048 watt hour lithium phosphate battery. That is the meat of the system, as I like to call it. Uh, it has a 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter. Uh, one thing, folks, what I have to give DJI credit for is their inverters. Their inverters are solid compared to some of the other power stations that I've reviewed in the past. Uh, they have one of the most solid inverters that I've seen on the market. And what I mean by that is by when you push that thing beyond its limits, it has that capability uh, to be pushed uh, and run pretty smooth. All right, so let's work our way into the USB ports on the unit. The total USB ports on this thing is superseded anything I could ever expect. It has eight total USB ports uh, and two of them that are 140 watts max output. As far as I know, folks, they're the only power station that has that capability, so it's quite impressive. So you're going to get four USB type A uh, outputs on there with a max output of 24 watts. And then you're going to get four type C outputs, two of them that are 145 watts. And then the other two, I think they're at 65 watts. All right, so let's talk about these USB ports. So as you can see now on the screen, I'm kind of giving a bit of a test to see how true it is to what it says in regards to the output. Now, to make this happen... I'm using a power bank and I'm using a certified 3.1 USB type C cable. And as you can see here, it's pushing roughly about 130 or so watts out of that. And you can see how it compares to the anchor itself. And for what the screen is saying, there is going to be, of course, some voltage drop from the power station through the cord into the power bank. But you can kind of see it's holding true to what it says. Um, it is a 140 watts. We're pushing 130. That's pretty solid, folks. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to kind of switch over to to show you how the 65 waters work and show you that also on the anchor as well to kind of show you how many power, how much wattage I'm getting out of there. I'm getting close to from what it looks like 60 watts uh, from these outputs as well. Again, there is a difference in from from the bank or from the power station to the power bank and the corridor is going to be a little bit of loss of power in there. But you can see these things are holding pretty, pretty precise. Now, some of you folks may ask, you know, why so many, uh, you know, USB ports, you know, why four type C's and why four type A's? A lot of electronics from your walkie talkies to your phones to a lot of other devices, tablets and whatnot, uh, take these USB type outputs, uh, portable fans, uh, a lot of things in the emergency preparedness realm of things. These have these uh, context of where they're all kind of either USB A or type C inputs and outputs and whatnot. So this is why I think this is kind of great to have eight different inputs or outputs, sorry, eight put outputs coming out of this machine and be able to power eight devices all at one time. 
and be able to use that rapid charge for specific things like your phone or anything that can take that kind of power, specifically like some of these more uh, up-to-date power banks that you can push 140, 160. I think there's some that can take up to 240 watts these days and having that capability to use that fast charge to get things up and running when you need them. One quick thing I wanna mention is, uh, and I don't have a, a clip for that, is the unerpable power supply. They have it uh, on, from what I got here in my notes, less than 10 milliseconds. But from what I have researched and watched and from my own experience using this device over the past several months is it's faster, folks, it's faster. I don't know why uh, they should have it down, but maybe they're just trying to play it safe. But less than 10 milliseconds, that is a phenomenal uh, UPS. Main reason why is because you want that transfer from grid power to power station power to be flawlessly and you know super quick because if not things might not recognize that and things are going to shut off on you. So I have to give kudos to DJI having that set up for that 10 milliseconds UPS system that they have built into this DJI 2000. All right, so let's talk about it's more of a proprietary thing, uh, what they are called the SDC. Uh, you get two of those, and I'll go ahead and throw it on the screen. These are your SDC ports. And uh, just to kind of touch on, these are your accessory ports. They're DC power. Um, and they have like these things that you can kind of plug in. I call them dongles. And as you plug the, in them, you have one to add additional accessories. You have one for a car uh, input and output for that thing there. And you can use these things uh, for those purposes. Also, I want to show you their old kind of uh, solar inputs uh, because you're using the same type of plug, the SDC plug for the solar inputs and these kind of mount on the side if you choose to do that um, to put solar input into the device to charge the unit uh, through these SDC plugs and of course you can use that but from my understanding DJI has come out with an 1800 watt I think I had it here yeah they have a 1800 watt charge controller is what I'm calling it but you can use this thing that's way better than the older variations if you happen to pick it up in a bundle or whatnot and you can run uh, from what I have researched and watched. Again, I'm kind of reiterating that uh, because it's been pouring rain for two weeks here and I just haven't had the opportunity to go outside and set up solar. But um, from what I've seen, people have gotten easily 1,400 watts of solar charging into the DJI power station. Now this for a 2,000 watt uh, power station is phenomenal. And if you happen to own the DJI 1000, all those dongles and whatnot are just cross, they, they, they're compatible with the DJI 2000 as well. Same plug, same everything. Anything that you have for it, you can just kind of transfer it over to the DJI 2000 uh, and not to worry about buying additional, you know, accessories. All right, so another thing I want to talk about is the charging speeds, the AC charging speeds. And uh, from my experience, I'm going to show you here, uh, there's like three different levels. Uh, basically, by using this switch here, you can kind of use this switch to go uh, from low, you know, low charging to high charging. And as you can see, the low charging was averaging roughly 1100 watts. Uh, we'll kind of go with that number. Uh, and then on the fast charging, it was around that 14 to 1500 watts. Then uh, if you download the app, uh, but there, you know, some folks don't like to download apps, but if you want to download the app, it just makes things a lot efficient to be able to, you know, update the firmware and kind of, it's really easy and simple to use. Um, if you're worried about, you know, things, you know, use a secondary phone or whatnot, you know, keep all your apps on the secondary phone, uh, then that's connected to the rest of the world and has your personal information on it. Uh, I always like to mention that because a lot of people say, well, I don't like apps. Well, you know, phones are a dime a dozen these days. You pick up an old phone, install your apps on that, uh, and you don't have to, and, you know, you have to worry about your personal information, banking information, and yada, yada, yada. From all the information that I've read through the comments uh, when I talk about, you know, installing an app on your phone. But anyways, you can push the charging aspect, and I'll show you here, that up to over 1,800 watts. And as you can see, it kind of fluctuates a bit. Uh, very fast, fast, fast charging. You can get this thing charged up uh, in an instant. Now, the inverter on this is a pure sine wave inverter. It's 120 volts at 60 hertz. So you can use pretty much all common appliances and delicate electronics. You can use all that stuff like that when using this power station. All right, so I'm going to show you a clip of a uh, bit of a stress test that I did. I used uh, a portable AC unit, and I also used a dual uh, electric dual hot burner or hot plates uh, that pushes about 1,600 watts. The air conditioning go from 9 to 1,200. And it was able to handle the power uh, surprisingly with ease uh, and no issues, no error codes, and none of that stuff like that. Uh, but from turning everything on and running it, 
and just kind of watching it for a while. Of course, I'm not going to bore you with like two hours worth of watching the power station video, but as you can see, it did really, really, really well uh, with no hiccups whatsoever. And I've had this question a couple of times in regards to the AC outlets, and I made sure I put a note on it. So the AC outlets are what they call a floating ground AC outlets. Uh, if you need more information on that, I just say, you know, you can look that information up. But I just wanted to get that out there because I've had people ask uh, in regards to that and the type of ground that these kind of some of these power stations. So I went a little further and did some more research and found out they are a floating ground. All right, so now let's talk uh, some of you folks out there in regards to you RVers out there uh, that need a 30 amp outlet and are looking for a portable power station that's not super huge. Uh, the weight of this thing here, I do have the weight down somewhere, uh, is 46 pounds uh, with the unit by itself. But I think having that option, having that 30 amp outlet on there is, is very, very cool. Uh, just because it's going to be beneficial to the folks in the RV community. Or maybe you have some sort of off-grid situation where you're going to use that same type of outlet. Uh, maybe you're you know building out a van or whatnot. And you're living that, that van life kind of situation. Uh, this can come in handy to power some of the things in a vehicle like that. One thing I forgot to mention is in regards to the USB-A quick chargers, uh, they range about 12 volts, 17 to 18 watts that are coming out of those USB type A's. And this is a very common question that I get asked, so I decided to, and, and I wish I would have recorded it for you folks. My apologies in regards to that. It's just been really busy around my life lately, uh, so sometimes I forget to pull out a phone or get a camera or whatnot. But a lot of people say, hey, Gray, will this power my refrigerator? So... During my testing, I let this thing run on my refrigerator for a few days here and there. I would unplug it from the grid and see how many hours I would get out of it. Uh, my fridge roughly averages between 90 to 100 watts. And on average, I got about 29 hours out of this small 2,000 watt portable power station. And to me, that was great results. Speaking of that, I want to talk about efficiency. So the DJI portable power station, the DJI 2000 specifically, uh, is rated at 2,048 watt hours. Now, that is usually a little bit different. The efficiency can range anywhere from the really bad ones down in at 60, 70 percent to the really good ones anywhere from 80 to 90 percent. And uh, from what I've gathered here, uh, usable, usable capacity is right around between 85 and 87 percent and around 1,772 watt hours. Right, so let's say you decide to purchase this thing. Of course, all links will be in a pinned comment down in the description if you care to. Uh, Use my links, it's up to you. The channel gets a small little uh, bonus from that, uh, but it's up to you. If this is something that you need or have the money for, then albeit go out and get it. Um, some people are gonna ask me about the pricing. You're looking at 53 cents per watt hour, and currently the sale price, I'm assuming it's because Prime and all that stuff is going on, is $1,099. So you're looking at 53 cents per watt hour, which is not too bad. And then you're probably wondering, you know, how is the warranty on that? So it comes with a three-year warranty. Now, again, if you download the app uh, and you go through, there's a little questionnaire on there. And if you, I, for, this is how it worked for me. Uh, maybe it's different for everybody else. But I know once I finished a questionnaire, it gave me an additional two-year warranty for a total of five years. Uh, so the, the unit itself is warrantied for five years, which I thought was great. All right, folks. So a little bit of a different format in this video. Uh, I'm, I was trying to condense it down a little bit. You know, sometimes I'll make these videos run about 45 minutes long and I will lose people. So I'm trying to condense it a little bit and kind of move through things a little bit quicker. But if I missed anything at all, please put that down in the comments if you have any questions and so on and so forth. Um, I do my best to answer every single comment, every single question. If I don't know the answer, I will find the answer for you or refer a ch another channel or, you know, a website or a manual to get you that information. Because um, some people may ask, hey, will this do this and we'll do that. I will try to do the footwork for you. That's just the type of person I am. Uh, I try to help anybody in the community because when you're making a purchase, you know, especially an expensive purchase, I want you to be as informed as possible when it comes to what you're buying. And uh, so that you don't write me a nasty comment in a year from now. I'm like, you know, I bought that DJI 2000 and it didn't do this. Well, I always suggest that folks, if you're watching my video, that means you're looking for or, look, or looking into power stations. And maybe you're looking specifically at the DJI 2000. Is after you watch my video, there's several other content creators out there that do a really good job. And like I said, I'll link one down below that I think does one of the best jobs out there. I've watched them grow from just a few hundred subscribers to thousands and thousands and thousands of them. Uh, it's just because he has, again, all the gear to kind of really break everything down physically. He's even taking these things apart to show you the insides. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not willing to do all that. But please, folks, 
Uh, if you got any value out of the video, hit that thumbs up button. It's always truly appreciated. And if you're trying to support the channel, either watch commercials, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, subscribe or use the links down in the description. And uh, you can also get more information off DGI's website. Um, again, if you have any questions, leave those with me. Outside of that, folks, I'm looking at all my notes here. I think we covered everything. Thank you so much for taking the time uh, to hang out with me and kind of look at the DJI 2000. And uh, we've got a lot of stuff, prime day and prime week or prime month, whatever it is at this point. Uh, lots of stuff to go over, lots of gear reviews. And uh, then we're going to bounce back to the garden and whatnot because we've got some things uh, popping in the garden, even in this nasty heat uh, and extreme torrential downpours uh, that we're going to touch on. But outside of that, folks, remember... You are not alone. This is Gray Man. I'm out. I'll see you guys in a rebound. And God bless every single one of you amazing people out there. And again, thank you for taking the time to watch this video.